Hey YouTube, so thank you for tuning in to the Dice of Flat Toy View, and today we're actually going to be taking a look at some very different things. Um, I've only got about two flip flap origami flapping bird toys, but it's also quite weird to see one Penguin Club World item being released for 2022. Uh, not strange to see the flapping bird water toys, I think they're both based on herons or egrets. Just before when I was actually making this video, I actually noticed that there was a Daddy Long Lick spider right next to the giant Christmas penguin. I actually made it as a prop for the Christmas fair at college, I think it was. And if I remember, um, unfortunately, um, there was a Daddy Long Lick spider right at the edge of the ceiling there. It was at the top left part of where I am there, next right on top of the giant Santa penguin. Um, obviously that giant Christmas penguin, it was a one take wonder, but nevertheless it was quite an amazing display, um, I would just say it, decoration actually. A very nice substitute Christmas decoration, even though Christmas has actually gone past by. <laughs> uh, sadly uh, I couldn't find the um, Daddy Long Leg Spider and I failed to pretty much, you know, successfully capture it just to show you what the spider looks like. But yes, I did actually um, make a video. I actually have made a video where I've already shown you a Daddy Long Leg Spider. Luckily, um, for those who suffer from arachnophobia, that's well done, no? For those who would have thought that there was a, um, a spider here, but no. There isn't actually, eh? But anyways, let me just go ahead and grab the webcam. Without sounding like a lonely lunatic. Okay, here we go. We've got Track Master Luke. And he's actually got a very nice new push back in there for the green one class. With three passenger coaches, it's just like any Incrobo from Thomas and Thames. And I've got one of those. Let me just take a look at the Penguin Club World uh, card first. Uh, it's a Valentine's Day sort of uh, card, but it looks like it says, You're my Penguin Time. It looks quite interesting. I love the pun of Valentine's Day, as it's got like penguins and Valentine's Day and whatnot. Uh, there you go, it says, Thanks for kissing me. You might think, ah, it just looks like lips. Well, yes, they are lips, but they're not blood. Okay, so it's not blood and gore. It's basically like cartoonish kisses from that female penguin there. And yes, both sides have got a trio of red hearts. Just to, you know, keep the Valentine uh, vibe going in here. And what's a bit disappointing about this Valentine's Day card is that there's no slogan saying, let's waddle on which is, you know, the most important slogan being featured on uh, for such toys. And if I grab a Penguin Cup World themed, uh, how do you say it? I I've actually realised there was some. Uh, let me just have a look here. Um, maybe, maybe I won't. <laughs> Got a funny feeling, um, uh, if I show you a Penguin Cup World themed, uh, how do you say it, product, which is a Christmas one, of course, I used to make products like this, but what's quite strange is, is that sadly, I think I've, I used to remember putting slogans like, let's water one forever, uh, but sadly I didn't pretty much put slogans on those, I think, on these new recent products, but what I might do is I might try and add them in future products, I hope, when I, you know, do products like this, uh, but anyways, uh, that's pretty much uh, a totally uh, strange, and yet, totally missing an action sort of feature is that we don't have the slogan which is you know a bit disappointing but we can save it for later on eh but okay let's just oh there you go just just pretty much uh, it's not too bad actually actually hang on I need to grab the card eh sorry I think I've just missed out something that was a bit rude of me and uh, I've actually uh, maybe I should probably have a look at the inside here because there'll be people saying oh but that you haven't shown us the inside but there it is there you go, you got two love them, and you can also have the X's for love writings. There you go, Happy Valentine's Day with hearts in it day. I mean, I originally I actually realised that this card has got a lot of fold creases on it, and the reason why I've actually realised that this card I actually did this is because I want this card to be in the shape of a heart. But sadly, um, I'm afraid those plans didn't work well. But nevertheless, it's actually a very nice looking card in. The, you know, in the vibe of Valentine's Day and Club Penguin at the same time. Anyways, I think that's about it. We'll try and do a much better one, I think. Yes. Right on top. And we're going to be taking a look at those two next. 
We're going to start with this one here. I think I've done a product like this before in 2019. It's a flip-up origami. Yes, it's a flip-up origami flapping bits toy. Uh, it's a white-faced herons or egrets um, fishing flop 12 pack. 11 pounds 99 or 12 pounds. Now the fishies themselves are actually not Australian, and the reason why um, these fishies are not Australian is because. Well, they're actually guppies. They're actually native to tropical South America, I think. But, um, I think there is a reason why Australia doesn't have that much freshwater species. It's because, well, Australia doesn't have that much in the way of freshwater species. And what's also quite the reason is, and I think the main reason why Australia doesn't have that much native freshwater fish species compared to the rest of the world is because Whenever you think about freshwater fish from other countries, well, it's all due to the amount of rain we get there. I think, um, I think in the UK we get like minnows and graylings and you know what I mean, eh? But uh, Australia doesn't have that much in the way of freshwater fish uh, because of the fact that you know the country is quite too dry. In fact, Australia is one of the driest continents on Earth, where it doesn't bring out as much rain as the others. Uh, I know there's quite a lot of other species of fish in Australia, like the Murray cod and, you know, Australian bass, Australian salmon, that, those sort of fishies. But anyways, let's take a look at the uh, guppies. I think these are, these are guppies. Here is a blue and a grey one. I presume if it's blue and grey, then I guess it's female. Well, guppies come in all sorts of colours, that's for sure. I, I, I presume that the males are more colourful than the females, I believe. She does look like she's got like a yellow pair of eyes, as you can see, a bit like a tiger. And there you go, is it much more colourful, I believe. This one here next is, I'll probably say it's a male. Looking by the way it's been designed and whatnot. And as I said before, Australia doesn't have that much freshwater fish species because of how dry it is. As, you know, it's actually one of the driest continents of Earth. As it is, not much in the way of rain, but... There you go, it looks quite nice. There you go, it's got like yellow, green and blue. It's beautiful. It's really, really amazing, these colours. And I mean, the way these fishies have been designed, it looks quite nice. They look quite tropical looking as well. In fact, guppies are actually tropical fish. If you can think about it. This one's got like blue with green on the top with orange actually green in the middle and orange at the top with a green and orange sort of scrubby fin and a yellow pair of eyes fancy that and you've also got uh, I, was, I was gonna say an evil looking guppy but it's actually a red and orange guppy with looks like it's got grey at the front though looks pretty fiery looking looks like something out of a volcano but to be honest it is a fish and we've also got an orange one, and it's quite funny, I've just correlated to the whole red, yellow, green, actually red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and again, violet sort of, you know, colours of the rainbow thingy. Okay, orange and blue, there's the other side of it here as well. Looking fairly nice. Oh, it's just dropped on. Alright. They're quite small, quite tiny, but they're very good and essential for uh, water birds. Fairly nice stuff, and I want to grab the um, blue and purple and orange looking guppy. Beautiful, right? Eh? I think guppies are quite cute looking fish, as you can see. I mean, it does sound like a very pathetic name for a fish, but the guppy really is quite a very beautiful looking fish. Maybe I could call it like a million fish, or... Well, guppies are also known as rainbow fish. Don't get me wrong, please, but anyways... Let's take a look at the egrets, or white-faced herons, and hence their name, they've got like a little white face amongst their yellow eyes, and there's the other side of it as well. They do look like little egrets because of the way they've been designed, but they're much more grey. It's like a mixture between a grey heron and a little egret. It's like you've mashed up the two species together, and then you've got like this, which I'd classify as like a miniature, I'll describe it as like, oh sorry, I have just did a bit of flash and then so it was a bit... Rude of me. Oh, pardon me again, but anyways. Uh, it's got like a long beak. And um, I might put a little fish on the 
you good there? Okay, let me just. Um, okay, so you just sort of shift these two bits there. One of our is gonna eat this little fishy eight. Oh yeah! Now that is what I call <laughs> versatility. Actually, more like or playability, more like. That's pretty fun, eh? Hey? Fairly nice stuff. And it's quite very important to look at the eyes as well because apart from the eyes, you may see that prominent face marking of white over there as well. And you might turn them turn on to the other side here as well. There you go, it looks beautiful, isn't it, eh? Yeah, the wings are fairly nice. It's got like a blackish tail design. Okay, it looks fairly nice though, and we'll take a look at what we've got, eh? Looks beautiful, isn't it? And we might go ahead and flap it like so. It is amazing. I love the way that these toys have been designed. There you go. It looks quite spectacular in the way it's been flapping. Beautiful, isn't it, eh? Beautiful indeed. And I might also grab this one here. Sometimes the grey colourisation on these herons, though, they may vary from light to, like, you know, dark. In a sense that, you know, in the way these birds are designed, that's how I can actually take a look at it. It actually is quite nice though, looking at white-faced herons. I think this is so much better than the first product, I think the first version I did back in 2019, but mind you, man, uh, I could pretty much spark a lot of arguments thinking, ah, oh, the, the first product's better, well, whilst there's other people saying, no, oh, no, nah, this version's better. You tell me on your thoughts about making herons and egrets. I think that's how I can pretty much describe them. These guys are quite great, eh? Lovely. Actually, what's very important to, um, uh, before I should actually repack this product, is that these birds have actually got a good colour combination of yellow and grey. Maybe that's not the right foot colourisation here. I think they've got this. It's like a little egret sort of foot. I would have assumed so, but. I think, comparing to that of little egrets, I think white-faced herons have actually got complete yellow feet. Might be totally wrong, who knows their ornithology? Please do so, and leave on the comments down below. Yeah, yeah, just please leave comments down below though, if you know the difference between, you know, a white-faced heron, you know, a little egret or a white-faced heron, in fact, yeah, you can pretty much tell the, the differences between these two species of herons or egrets. What do you call it? Eh? They look quite nice. Oh, boards. Well, herons and egrets are pretty much big birds. But, um, yeah, they look fairly nice, actually. Um, over the feet, they've all got names as well, which is very important on these birds. Yeah, they look pretty nice. I think in breeding plumage, they would actually, I think a lot of herons and egrets, um, during the breeding season, they would actually develop loads of feathers. Quite amazing, and I suppose that as it's pretty much New Year's Day, I believe there'll be loads and loads of herons and egrets flying away to their breeding colonies, I'm sure. I'm sure they will be indeed. Anyways, I think I'm pretty much done with this lip flap product. Let's take a look at the... Ooh, look at that, we've got the flapping birds, intermediate, um, egrets, and actually it's called a breeding intermediate egrets and tilapia fishing flock tar pack. Costs about £10.99 or £11. And it looks like that the intermediate egrets actually come in different types of colours, though, when it comes into their breeding plumage. I believe these two guys here are from Asia, they're like the nominate species of the intermediate egret. Please correct me if I'm wrong, though, right? And we've also got, uh, I believe that's the Australian version, I think. It's over these two. Maybe that one as well. Maybe this one here is also a breeding intermediate egret. It's quite funny that intermediate egrets actually tend to have various different colour variations in the way they breed, depending on which subspecies it is. Uh, I actually like the artwork, it looks quite good. And we've got tilapias, and I think the tilapias that we get, I think they're like African fish. They're like fish from Africa, right? Tilapias, eh? It's like the, uh, what's that catfish from Thailand? Uh, I can't remember the name of it, eh? Uh, someone will, will know. 
I really don't know what's that name of the catfish from Thailand. Is it the buzzer catfish? I can't really remember. But anyways, let's take a look at the tilapias. Uh, what's quite funny about tilapias is that they actually remind me of um, perch. As I can tell from the way they've been designed. And to be quite obviously honest, whenever you go to like a supermarket, you'll see, um, I would just say, fillets of tilapia, uh, which is like a species of fish from, uh, it's like a type of African fish. Uh, the species that we've got, I think they're called Mozambique tilapias, that's what they've got. Find me very specific that we've got. It looks like a very evil and menacing looking fish. And it actually does say Mozambique tilapia is on the back of the packaging there. That's what it says there. On the blurb of all. And yes, it looks quite nice. Lovely designs indeed. I actually like the detailing. Of all this, what you can see is what you get. Looks like a bit of a dark mole type fish with a bit of a passive looking hint of yellow there. Not sure if you can see the face a bit well. Sometimes the camera does play up there and make the um, item a bit distorted. Or a little thingy a bit distorted. I can see the eye though. I'm not sure if you can see the mouth, but uh, I don't know how good or bad it comes from the camera though, but I just have to make sure what it looks like. There you go, there's its mouth. Right over there, I think. Yes. And we've also got this here. Looks very similar to. Uh, that one there, I think. But the main difference is, is that this guy here has got grey fins on the top and the rear. Where's this one here? <laughs> oh, crikeys, I've just sneezed! Oh, better be COVID. Hopefully there's not going to be any signs of COVID, I hope. This one here has got, like, green. I, I would probably presume it should be yellow, but on the top. But, oh, this one's the same. <laughs> and what's also quite strange is that the tail is yellow with grey and green at the back. Very nice. And this one here looks very similar to that one there. But this one's a little bit darker. I think. Looks quite nice overall though. Uh, it's strange that this other side here doesn't have any stripes. That's a bit sloppy, eh? Uh, maybe I need to go ahead and duck a pencil out. What's up with me getting pencils out and then just starting to, you know, get and do, you know, certain toy views which have got like some bits of detailing which is missing in action. I thought we weren't going to have any of that, but look at me. I'm just editing out just certain bits of various things in toys that should be there. But there you go, I've just added these stripes, the side stripes on the fish to look pretty realistic. It looks like a bat. Whenever I think of it, I. Eh? Hang on, I just need to. Blow my nose and just wash my nose in the sink and I'll be right back and then I'll take a look at the ebooks, okay? Oh crikey's Oh my god, see it's like torture, isn't it though? It really is like torture when you start to sneeze. I think. Who knows? Maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but I'm just trying to be hygienic, that's for sure. And be safe and and food. Without sounding quite gruff here, as I'm making this very, very weird-looking video on YouTube at the moment. Okay, I need to get back to where I was. Now, before I should actually continue, I need to dry my hands. I'll be right back as well. Okay, I'm back, and um, <laughs> that was not a lot of break, wasn't there, eh? Just a short break, and I know my hands. I've gone a bit wet there because I was just attempting myself to dry. But anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at the herons or intermediate egrets. I think that's what they're called, eh? I think they're also known as median egrets or median herons. Just because of the fact they look like little egrets and great white egrets or herons, I think. Uh, this one's got a bit of nastiness. It's strange. It's got like a little black spot here, which is quite weird. It's not very nice to feature, eh? On this bird, but... On this one here, it looks like um, it's got like red and yellow on the beak, <laughs> and there's also like a yellow eye with a green sort of law. I think the laws is kind of like it reminds me of one particular part of bird though. You know, whenever I think of a budgerigar, 
I think there's that bit that is like in between of the head and the beak, which I'd probably call it as the sear. Okay, so it looks quite nice. Fairly nice detailing. Lovely beak uh, design. Looks nice and pointy and there you go. I think all of them say breeding intermediate egret, which looks fairly nice. And I've actually got different variations here as well. This one's got a grey beak with a blue lure and it's got like a yellow sort of eye as well. In fact, all of the intermediate egrets have got like yellow eyes. As you can see, it looks fairly, fairly nice. But what's also sort of interesting is, is that they've also got like a colour combination of red and grey on the legs, which is fairly nice indeed. There you go. It's fairly nice overall. And you've also got that bear's why, and we've also got those ones here as well. It looks fairly, fairly nice. No problemo at all. And then you've also got this here, which looks very similar to the one with the blue laws, but this one's got like yellow laws. And just as I thought that these egrets have got like yellow eyes, no, nope, I was wrong, only just. This one here and that one there actually have red eyes, so I thought all intermediate egrets have yellow eyes, but no, I was wrong. Actually, so yes, I heard, or oh, yes, you heard of me just stating that all intermediate egrets have yellow eyes. Not all of them do. I think the nominate subspecies is like the only one which doesn't have like you know doesn't have any um, signs of yellow eyes this one's got like red eyes with a grey beak and the laws are yellow so it looks like they've flip flopped to the beak colours which is quite strange eh? Uh, but uh, nevertheless and also the eye colours well, which is quite strange but uh, nevertheless these guys they look fairly fantastic and I bet you what luckily enough uh, we didn't have time to pretty much make a repeat sort of product by having intermediate egrets Mashing it with other fish. How about that one, hey? The only weird indeed, and whenever I make products like that. Anyways, I think that's about that in this whole video on YouTube, eh? So, yeah. And I'm just pretty much staring up towards this corner here because maybe there might be a daddy on the spider popping up here. Climbing back just to be build some more webs. Or make some more webs. Well, it's nice and cozy. Just to protect him himself or herself from the diabolicalness of the cold winter that we have at the moment. But anyways, if you really enjoyed in this very very interesting video, sorry if this video has actually gone a bit iffy as always as usual like many of videos do on YouTube. But anyways, please do subscribe for more videos and give this video a like as always as usual. Normally I tend to say please give this video a like and subscribe for more videos in the future. Which is obviously like, you know, the usual norm. As, anyway, as always, with that being said, um, I'd like to say thank you so much for watching, and goodbye for now.